Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan from Seek Outside. I am here today. Uh, just got done with a five day archery elk hunt here in Colorado. Um, I'm going to be going over uh, some gear with you today, some of the essentials. This is not so much going to be a pack dump as it is just uh, counting down some things uh, that I always recommend everybody have in their pack with them, uh, as well as kind of go over the, some of the benefits. Uh, you're going to see a theme here. A lot of these things have multi uses. Um, or like, you know, backs up, backups and stuff like that. So um, bear with us and we'll get going here. All right, guys, so first off, I'm gonna go over my pack here. Uh, what I have is a 6300 custom breakaway bag. Um, and this is the Spectra grid pattern uh, of the fabric. I got it set up, no face pocket, but I do have the talent system on here. This is an amazing pack. Uh, if you are going to be doing any backcountry hunting, I would definitely recommend going with a breakaway bag. Um, it's just very versatile. Uh, you know, if you need to, if you're just doing uh, day hunts, you can take this bag off and roll with the frame. Uh, if you're doing multi-day backpacking trips, you can, you know, be able to put a quarter in the back there, but also pack camp out um, on the back here. Um, but the thing that I love the most about this pack is the talent system. And this thing is just amazing. I'm gonna go over compression here in a little bit with some of my items here, but uh, this talon is just so multi-dimensional. I love it. Uh, so it just clips right off right, right there. Um, I put my bow right there, strap it on. Uh, we do have a video up on YouTube. You can check that out. Um, but it's just awesome because you can put, uh, if, you got, if you get something with, uh, with antlers, you can throw that right there. It's much easier to carry. Uh, if you need to throw an extra quarter there, if you need to throw your sleeping pad, anything you want, just compression wise can go here. I love compression on my backpacks. So um, other thing I love about this is it's got the zipper pocket. You can keep all, all sorts of things in here. Um, I just got, you know, my kill kit, water filter, some zip ties, um, all that good stuff. So, all right, let's move on to the list of gear that I always like to keep in my pack or always like to have with me on an archery elk hunt. First off, shelters. Um, this is obviously gonna depend a little bit on, you know, how many people you're going with, if you're just doing solo, what your situation is, if you're, camp if you're packing in or if you're car camping, um, what your comfort level is. Uh, but the Silex is what I took and I absolutely love this shelter. Uh, it's, it weighs in at just over a pound, pound and few ounces with the, with the stakes and everything. Uh, sets up with some trekking poles uh, so you, you're not hauling a bunch of extra weight around with uh, you know, uh, center poles and connecting poles and all that good stuff. Super easy to set up. You can set it up in two minutes, take it down in 30 seconds. Super easy, especially if you're mobile, if you want to be mobile. Uh, it's just great to be able to move camps. So that was my main shelter. Um, one of the biggest, uh, most uh, utilized tools that I always take in my pack is some sort of ground tarp. Uh, what I took with me on this trip was the DST tarp. Uh, the reason I love this tarp specifically is because you can, uh, what I mainly used it as was just a ground sheet to put underneath my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag uh, to keep it from getting dirt in there and also as uh, protection just in case you get a big rainstorm or something, you're not getting all your gear wet. But the reason I love this is super easy to take out of my tent and I can set it up um, in camp as like a, a, a sunshade, like a, a little awning type thing. Uh, just in the middle of the day, you can tape, take a nap under it. Uh, if you are expecting weather, snow or anything like that, or heavy winds, you can take it with you in your pack and set it up um, with a couple trekking poles and some stakes um, to be used as a shelter. Uh, it can also, that, I mean, there's just so many ways you can pitch this thing. Uh, it's awesome. So I would definitely check that out. Definitely recommend taking one of those on every trip with you. First aid kit. Uh, this is important, um, obviously, um, but I want to go over specifically a couple things uh, that I take that are extra in my first aid kit. Um, one thing that I always take extra of is uh, adhesive, like waterproof tape. Uh, and I just love this stuff because you can use it first off if you get a cut or something, 
Obviously that's one use for it, but you can tape up, you know, holes on your pack, holes in your tent. Uh, you know, if you get something on your water bottle or, I mean, you can literally tape anything with it. Um, it's just very utilitous. You can use it for multiple different things. So that's why I love having it. Um, I also take an extra big thing of Neosporin, um, triple antibiotic pain relieving ointment. Uh, this is just the, the Kroger brand. Um, but those are two things that I like to have extra of in my pack just because first off, I feel like most first aid kits don't give you enough of the antibiotic ointment. And if you get a cut on the first day of your seven day trip, uh, you know, if you don't use that stuff sparingly with those little packets, you're gonna run out. I just like having extra. So that's my first aid kit. Um, obviously I'm not going over some of the basic things like food. I'm sure there's other videos out there that you guys have seen. I don't need to cover that. Obviously you're gonna be taking your bow. Obviously you're gonna be taking your license. This is just some of the essential stuff that a lot of people don't think about when they're first compiling their gear list. So next thing is, and this is probably my favorite tool to have on, I take it camping, I take this thing everywhere. Uh, this is a Camelus uh, three in one, I believe it's called the Camtrax hatchet. Um, this thing is amazing. Uh, so what it is, and especially for hunters, it's, it's very useful. Um, so what it is, it's a hatchet uh, with a hammer point uh, on the back, and then you push this button, and it's got a folding saw. Um, now, obviously, you can think of all the different uses for this, right? Uh, so you got the hatchet for wood, you got the hammer for hammering stakes into your tent um, for anything else that you might use a hammer for, um, and then you got this folding saw for getting wood, um, but also on an archery elk hunt, um, if you're fortunate enough to get something, uh, you know, you got, a, you got a bone saw that you can use. You don't have to bring an extra one. Uh, it's just saving weight. This thing comes in at, I, I believe it's just over a pound, uh, maybe closer to a pound and a half. Uh, but you can cut the weight down by just putting a sock over the blade here and instead of this clip-on attachment. But I like this just because I can attach it to my hip belt there. So. Um, I would definitely recommend having something like this on your trip. Next thing, trekking poles. These are very important uh, to me. Uh, first off, I mean, if you're running one of our, like a Silex or an Eolus or even a Cimarron or a uh, Silver Tip um, with a trekking pole hitch, you obviously need to bring trekking poles for your center pole. But uh, aside from that, they're very useful, um, you know, if you end up getting something, you can use them as a meat pole if you don't have any trees around. Um, one of the, my favorite ways to use trekking poles other than their designed use um, is as kind of like a glassing tripod. So you can kind of bend, you know, put, um, kind of fold this back in and uh, put your glasses right on top there. And it's a nice stabilizing thing, especially if you got, you know, some heavy duty, you know, 12 by 50s or something like that just another multi-use thing. Um, <clears throat> knife sharpener, this is key. Uh, I don't care what kind of knife you have. Uh, if you're cutting up a whole animal, by the end of it, it's probably gonna be a little bit dull um, unless you're like very precise with not cutting any hair, but it's pretty hard to do um, when, you're, when you're cutting something up. So I just, uh, I carry the work sharp uh, field sharpener um, it's got the coarse blade, it's got the fine refining blade, and it's also got the broadhead uh, slash hook slash, um, um, it's got like the fine and coarse like ceramic piece that you can sharpen things on. Um, so it's super lightweight, very easy to use, much lighter than a sharpening stone, so that's why I love it. It's also got the 20 degree uh, guide on there so that you can make sure every, every swipe with your knife is precise. Um, another thing, this is kind of more specific to elk hunting um, and archery elk specifically because the elk are in the rut. I always like to bring uh, some cow estrus and I know this is something that a lot of people are on the fence about. The reason I'll tell you what I use it for, give away a little secret here. So I don't use it to cover up my scent or anything like that necessarily. What I do use it for is if you're hunting in thick cover or if you got a bull coming in 
from a certain way that you know, it, you know, you got a game trail right in front of you and you think he's gonna be walking down it. I will spray a bunch of this stuff right where I wanna be able to pull back and shoot. And the reason I do that is because, um, you know, the hope is he's gonna be walking this way. And he, if you're calling him in or whatever, he's walking this way. Uh, a lot of times, if they don't have a reason to stop right there, they're not gonna stop. They're just gonna keep going. And if you're at full draw, um, you know, that can be like, you obviously, with archery, you wanna standing, a target that's standing still. My hope with the cow elk estrus is that when that bull's walking, He's going to smell that spot that I sprayed. He's going to stop, and that's going to give me the perfect opportunity to shoot. Um, I will also spray a little bit on the soles of my shoes when I'm walking into an area uh, just to kind of hopefully cover the scent. I'm not sure how effective that is, but like I said, the main reason is to stop an elk um, when you want him to stop. So another thing that's super lightweight and nice to have in there. Um, extra trigger release. This thing is key. Uh, the worst thing that you could ever experience is getting up to your spot, uh, you know, whether it's five, six, even two miles in, and you realize that you forgot your trigger release for your bow. Um, I just keep this thing in my talon here and it never leaves unless I need it. Fortunately, I haven't needed it yet, um, but that's why you bring it. Hopefully you don't have to use it, but the one time that you do, it's going to be the best decision you ever made. So, and this one's just a cheap one. Uh, it's the same style as my normal release, uh, but it is a little bit cheaper. Um, so if you're on a budget for your hunt, you can, you can spend 40 bucks and get a decent trigger release just as a backup. So definitely something I would always recommend. Uh, this one's pretty basic Leatherman. Um, I mean, just the 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 use is in the name right it's a multi-use tool uh love the pliers love being able to you know if you forget a can opener or something you can use the 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 knife on here it's also a good blade to be able to burn uh you know if you have to cut something uh that you don't want to um, dull your regular knife on uh you know this is just a cheap one from walmart uh, but it gets the job done so definitely would recommend having that and i always like to keep mine uh, hooked with the belt loop here uh, just so it's easily accessible if you need it in a jam it's right there so definitely always bring some sort of utility tool multi-use tool um, cool the life straw this is another multi-use uh, tool that I always take with me um, and I find it to be just useful in so many ways uh, so first off uh, the main reason it's useful is you know, obviously I bring my other water filter with me uh, to fill my Nalgene up, but this is kind of my backup system. So I have two water filtration uh, uh, methods uh, just in case I get in a jam, um, but it has a couple other uses. So the, the one time I will use this instead of filtering water is if I'm like getting down to a spot in the morning and you know, say you forget to fill up your water or something like that and you walk by a creek, you can just dip it in and screw the lid back on and you're good to go. Um, so it's, it's really good for just quick water filtration. Stop by a creek, you know, uh, fill it up and you're good to go for a while. Um, but the other thing I like to use it for is um, if you're planning on boiling water for like a, for dehydrated meals or something like that, and you got a stream right next to you, um, you know, obviously you don't wanna dip your drinking bottle in the, the stream to fill your, your uh, stove up, uh, whatever pot you have for your stove. So I will use this to kind of dip it in the stream and then pour it, you know, you can take it back to camp and pour it in your, your little cup or whatever you're using to boil water, your jet boil or whatever. Um, just as a, you know, you gotta be safe out there. You don't wanna get your Nalgene um, contaminated with unfiltered water, so. This is a very awesome thing to have with you. It's, again, super lightweight. You can just clip it on with the carabiner uh, and you're good to go. Um, all right, cool. So the last two things that I got here are just some backups. Um, so, and I wanna talk a little bit about compression here. So I think it is one of the most important things to have on your pack is um, ways to compress things to the outside. Um, 
the reason that is important is because you never know what you're going to come across out there. You never know if you want to, uh, you know, if you're going to end up like say something breaks on your pack and you need to strap some stuff onto the back. Uh, just having, whether it's loops or you could even tie something on here. Um, but just a way to compress something across the back, um, is just a, a very useful thing to have the ability to do. Um, so I obviously have all my gatekeepers on here, um, but I always bring a couple extras and I always bring the extra long ones. Uh, so these are the 36 inch gatekeepers, uh, gatekeeper straps. And these are good for, especially if you have a load in your breakaway portion of your pack. Um, sometimes depending on how big the load is, um, you want a little bit, uh, sometimes these side straps can get a little bit close to the end. So it's good to have these extra long ones as just extra compression to make sure that your pack bag's not gonna fall off when you got a big load back there. Um, but the other thing I love about carrying extra gatekeepers is you can use these um, almost as like zip ties if you need to. Uh, you know, you could attach a couple together uh, and clip them on to make an extra long, you know. I don't know what you'd have to use this for right now off the top of my head, but I feel like it might be useful out there in the woods. So. I just always like carrying a few extras and obviously, you know, if you get a uh, buckle that breaks, you can just take the, uh, the clips off and throw them back on your pack. So good to have something extra there. Um, I always take an extra load shelf with me as well, uh, especially if you're going to be packing out an elk. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to be putting a 80, 90 pound quarter in there uh, and um, you know, our load shelves are very heavy duty, but you never know if you forget to clip uh, something on correctly and something breaks, it's always just good to have an extra. The other thing I love about this is if you need to um, compress something onto the back here, you can also use it that way. Um, again, compression, it's just always useful, especially when you're packing animals out because, you know, if you're packing a bear out uh, and you wanna put you know, quarterback there and then the hide right here, it's great. If you want to pack an elk out, you want to put a quarterback there and then the skull or the hide back here, very useful. You know, if you find any sheds you want to take home, compress them, uh, sleeping pad, all that stuff is compressible. So uh, again, just compression is something that I love to have out in the woods. Um, but yeah, guys, that that's basically, uh, those are, the items that I would say I always take with me, archery elk hunting. Uh, they are very essential to me. Um, you guys can take this list and kind of compose your own based off of it um, or get exactly what, what I have as well. Um, but appreciate you guys watching. Uh, stay tuned uh, to our U YouTube page. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more hunting content with hunting season here upon us. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and stay tuned to our other social media outlets for, um, we're going to be doing a few cool giveaways on our podcast and stuff like that. So make sure you're staying, staying in, tat, in, in touch there. So um, thank you guys again for being here and uh, good luck this season.